I hear you. <laughs> but I don't hear the beat of the drum. Yeah. Well, we are live. Welcome to Extinct the Podcast. I'm Rosa Hebe from the BigfootReport.com. With me as always from uh, Taser Bigfoot. Dot com. He's the YouTube dude. You know him as Snow Walker Prime. Mr. Michael Merchant is here with us today. How hey you guys. doing, Michael? Excellent. How uh, are you guys? The not-so-secret Asian man. Uh, he used to be the little Sasquatch with the nipples, <laughs> and he is the guy with all the news. Ooh, he is Bigfoot yeah. Evidence blog, Mr. Sean Evidence. How you doing, Sean? What up, all G? Right, guys. What the hell is going on? We got a small group today. Damien will be joining us uh, sometime awesome. mid-podcast mid, uh, for anybody who of course he uh, will. is wondering where he's at. Yes, of course. Damien never, uh, is never uh, on, on, on time. I think the last three podcasts that he was on, he actually joined in at some point after we started. He's on taser time is exactly, what he is on. Exactly. <laughs> so, guys, what the hell is going on? Man, so many things. I mean, I I, I can't even barely, I can barely catch up with Michael and his um videos. I mean, I I last I heard he was doing a survival listing with Bill Brock. <laughs> what are you guys doing yeah, out there, dude? What's going on in in Maine these days? A whole lot of stuff it seems like. Pretty pretty much we were smelling like like beer butt most of the time because uh, <laughs> we lost the cap. To the deer lure, you get deer lure. It's got like deer urine, and it's just really nasty song. I lost the cap, so we had to use it all in one dose. So we're, we're pretty I'm uh, checking out our chat room. It seems a couple people are having trouble. It's always the same couple people, but um, I'm checking in with them right now. I just want to make sure our uh, we can't with our. <laughs> you had me going for a second. You had me going. Man, Snowwalker's breaking up. What's wrong with Merchant All Spike? right, let's get this thing started. Let's get this show on the road. Let's talk about Beard Card and last week's podcast. Now, after last week's podcast, um, Beard Card surprisingly decided to hang out with us on the phone and put in a little bit of time into a conversation, and we came to some agreements. I apologize for being rude. They started to feel comfortable. And they agreed to do more work with Team Taser. Now, Michael, you released a video that's doing very well. Your interview with Beard Card. Why don't you take us through that a bit? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, Rowan, you know something. You apologized again in in print to them, which I thought was pretty pretty big. Yeah, because <laughs> um, you know I thought the same thing. I, I thought they were kind of full of it. I thought it was a person. I guess I didn't really look at the video that closely, but after talking to them, they seemed sincere. Uh, you know, I had a really good – I think when you talked to them and I was asking about what t what took place that they never acted squirrely with any of the questions that I asked them. They they seemed like to really be really honest to me. And, of course, during the course of editing, as you know, you're looking at the same clip over yeah. and over and over yeah. again. And I got looking at that clip, <laughs> and it looks to me like the thing has got, like, you know, hands that are curved under – now, our good – It just looked like, the, like more authentic. The more I looked at it, of course, I'm, my perception is probably compromised. Yeah, because I'm going to say that yeah, I'm still not, I, I I'm still not sold, but I did, I did think that they were very – they are telling a, a very good story. It's very convincing from the – Well, somebody could have yes. hoaxed them. Or they're extreme. You know, there was five or six people there. Maybe the two people I talked to – are completely sincere, and who the heck knows? It might have been another person in that group. I mean, uh, that would be the most likely right. scenario that it was somebody was pulling one yeah. over on him. But yeah, it's it, I it's don't a think compelling it's a, case. I, that's the word. That's the that's the uh, hip word in, in this industry or in this field, I should say. Compelling. What does interest me though is how far our good friend Mister Guided by Pandas t uh, has taken it. Well, what do you think of that artwork? Knocked it out of the park. Yeah, yeah. He? he did. He did some amazing artwork there. But what do you think conceptually of where he's going with what he sees? Well, here's the thing. I mean, I take responsibility. Um, as I told you guys, Dr. Jeff Melrom, I sent it to him, and he sent me a very nice letter back. And one of the questions that he asked, which was a good question, was, you know, whose idea was it to be putting the baby in there? And I said, well. I don't necessarily even believe it's a Bigfoot. I mean, it could be a person formulating a hoax, but the uh, Mrs. Beard card indicated that there was some discoloration in and around the, the body, and it's doing kind of an odd behavior. Most of the you know Bigfoot videos that we watch, the thing is 
you know, getting out of Dodge, right? right? You, I mean, I'm not aware of that kind of digging going on. So there's like, like something happened in there. So the guy that I painted kind of suggested, you know, him and I talked back and forth. And I said, you know, maybe, you know, if you want to go, just go crazy with it, do some extra stuff, we'll put it out there and let, let people look at it and, you know, open up for discussion. Yeah. And how is so, that? So I don't know if there's a baby there or not, but here's one thing I do know. If there are adult Sasquatches, they're having babies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somewhere along the line. They're producing offspring. You would expect to be seeing them. And a lot of the reports, it, it seems, especially, I don't know, up here in Maine, I've uncovered a couple, you know, people are talking about yeah. juveniles. So now That's interesting. So, yeah, I put it in there for kind of uh yeah, just you know, to open up discussion. The, and and how is that how has that gone so far? How has the quote unquote discussion gone? I think it went in a bunch of different directions. Um I think overall most people most people think those guys are sincere and I think there's a good proportion of people that think there could be something uh -huh, to it. Uh-huh. No, not necessarily the baby <clears throat> aspect of right. it, but the fact you know, that it might be a legitimate Sasquatch. See, here's I, the other thing. Um, I don't. This, the, this is what didn't get. This is the guys, people that are watching the podcast. <laughs> this is the inner circle. This is the secret information that didn't come out in the interview. Mrs. Beardcart indicated to me, uh, I think it was her grandfather. I, I could be off. One of her relatives uh, had been parking there, you know, 20, 30 years. I'm, I'm assuming it was like a lover's lane type of thing. And some large creature approached the uh -huh. car. Like hey Sean, your phone is ringing on the podcast. <laughs> is he on, is he having his own conversation again? Uh, He's probably posting to his blog <laughs> while we're having. All right, so so yeah, you know, there's a historical context apparently to that area, row. I don't know. Maybe some maybe some of the listeners, maybe somebody else, maybe you know somebody could find out if there is other reports in that area. But it seems like that these guys had an encounter and then. You know, her grandfather had had now, some sort of. And, and did you there. say that it was in the same area? Her grandfather had an encounter in the same area. Yeah, on the same yeah. mountain. Interesting. Uh, I think on the same road. Well, that does that definitely makes things more compelling. <laughs> if there's there's that yeah, word, there's that I word thought, again, but you know. but it it makes it for an interesting story. <clears throat> well, yeah, go ahead. You know, at at first I, I was nice you to I join us. <laughs> I was on the fence about the uh -huh. whole thing, um, especially when I was talking to Steve Alcorn. You know, he's the uh, our little private investigator. Um, he he does a lot of this kind of stuff. He looks it up. He try to get to the bottom of things. And in one of the Yahoo um, article, he saw a comment by one person, and this person said, "It's not real." You know, my my husband and I went for a drive Sunday afternoon, October twenty eighth, around the Alpine Loop. And saw some people in the side of the road. One of the guys had what looked like a gorilla costume on top half of his um, body heading up the hill. I had a friend send this to me, not knowing we had seen that, and I didn't know that uh, it was a YouTube video going around. I mean, really, people. I, but whatever. Anyways, I look at the, I look at the pictures that Michael ha uh, has on the video. This is nowhere near the side of the road. This is like it looks like it's really secluded. No, they you could definitely tell that, you know, they that was another thing. They were they were really forthcoming by like being really transparent. They actually gave me photos that I did not include in the video for for my own personal reasons, but <laughs> uh, they weren't holding anything back. They were really truthful and you, you know, they told me if I needed any additional information. So I included all those photos. I mean, anybody yeah, looks yeah, at yeah, those, those photos, those photos are tell, very helpful. Very helpful and it's right. very you know what the situation was. Yeah, you can see the terrain. You can also see that it's quite remote. You can see when they're telling the story, it didn't mesh up perfectly, but you can see that there's a valley, you know, way down below. So yeah, I think they're in a pretty remote area there. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so I, I think this person's lying. It is, it, you know, it it doesn't look. It it just it looks like just them out yeah. there, in the middle of you know nowhere. It doesn't look like it's by like a public road or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't know. People just making stuff out now. So there's all these people coming out claiming it's them. Remember the Mexican Hieronymus guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, what? What? How many views do they have now, Sean? Wow. Um, if you, collectively, I think they have probably over eight million views uh, now. I mean, you get you, you're going to attract attention from all sorts of people. I just know, you know, like I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, you know, Roha has access to a polygraph. I'm not a polygraph machine, but. They, I believe them. They seem very sincere to me. They gave me no indication whatsoever they were lying 
or being mistreated. Not only that, but they seem like really nice people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they yeah. seem really, like, really good people yeah. to me. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And but, for the record, I don't have access to a polygraph machine. We don't need to start any more conspiracies, Michael. No, no one's going <laughs> to I know, man. You, you hooked, no. you hooked, I have to drink the Justin Kool-Aid now because you hooked him up to polygraph and he passed <laughs> Not it. just passed no, it, but yeah. aced it, so... Yeah. Aced it, and, right. Okay, now speaking of uh, of news, uh, let's 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 skip past this stuff. According to MSNBC's The Cycle, a stat that they showed during their interview with Bobo, there's been a lot of Bigfoot in the news this week because of the season premiere. Bobo's yeah, awesome, he's... man. People aren't reporting <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> I yeah. love that line. I'm not telling you that the moon's made out of cheese. Uh, so. Um, but they say that thirty percent, thirty percent of Americans believe in the possibility of Bigfoot now, and that's a huge. That's a hundred wow. million people. There's there's over three hundred million people in this in in this country. So that's over a hundred million people um, are are now accepting the, the possibility. That's a huge, huge demographic for us now. Do you guys think that twenty thirteen that Forbid, forbid, forbid from mentioning them, but finding, um, finding <laughs> Facebook blob, Please blob don't. squatches don't. said that 2013 will be the year. Now, I don't think we're putting one in the box, so we are getting closer. And this team certainly is is having some very compelling things happen to us. But I'm building a bigger we're box, <laughs> building a bit, and I, I may have said too yeah, much. It, <laughs> is this thing about to break wide open? Here's the problem, Ro. Here's the problem as I see it for 2013 being the year is that the world is going to end 2012, December 25th, according to my Damn it. So we literally have got weeks to put this thing okay. in a box. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, We've got to accelerate the program. We'll, 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 have, to, we'll have to work on uh, picking up the You pace. know, I agree with Bobo. When Bobo, I think it was Bobo. I'm going to give him credit for it anyways. said that technology is catching up to the squatch, yeah. and, and I hate that term squatch, but <laughs> – I think he's right. You know, you get in the technology that's – and I mean, look, we're going to have a $300,000 bag of hot air with high-tech equipment and little elves in it. <laughs> I can't wait for Dr. Jeff Meldrum to get that, that dirigible up. I think I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to yeah. be awesome. So 2013, what, what can we expect in 2013, Sean? What do you think? Well, you know, people have been saying – every year people come out and say this. In um, 2012, uh, Agent Erickson, right. the guy is in charge of the Erickson Project, um, during the um, a conference, <laughs> the Bigfoot conference, said, "Yeah, this is the year of Sasquatch 2012." But that's because he was expecting Ketchum to come right. out with her before. <laughs> I mean, um, even 2011, people were talking about the year of Sasquatch. Right. I mean, um, when Justin Smith took him to, um, body to the body uh, recovery kill site, mm. yeah, body recovery. Um, you know, they were looking for the body and everything, and then all of a sudden, Derek Randall's got a phone call from Melba you know, Ketchum. You know. Uh, saying that I'm gonna republish report. I'm gonna republish report. Um, I guess she's like afraid, like uh, Justin might steal her thunder or something. But but everybody then was expecting that year to be the year of the Sasquatch, mm -hmm. 2011. So I don't know. I don't know what what, what what's special about 2013. Yeah. I mean, what? Here's what's well, it's funny. a planetary alignment with a black hole, Sean, and the gravitational. <laughs> Mock you know, me, mock me if you will, part. but That's I'll tell you why 2013 is the year of the uh, of the Sasquatch. 2013 is the year of the Sasquatch is be because we're getting Michael Merchant out here to the Sierras in 2013. Oh, kick ass! Oh, yeah, you know we're, we're and, and no one will be safe because there'll be foot snares yeah. everywhere. We're we're <laughs> bagging one. We're bagging one. We're hot on the trail. We've had a we've had a few things going on, and we're getting closer. And the last piece of the puzzle is to get this man out here. The real, the best, I think the best goddamn Bigfoot tracker in the world, in the universe. <laughs> Wasn't 2008 the year of the Squatch, according to Georgia, the state of Georgia? I don't even have to track rubber suits. I can just go to Walmart and buy them. That other guy had to actually go hunt it down and freeze it and fight with MIBs. I don't have any of that BS. <laughs> uh, go for the real thing, flesh hey, um, and blood, breathing. There, who, who's, uh, what's Rick Dyer up to? I'm sorry I said his name. I've been saying everybody's forbidden names all of a sudden. <laughs> Dick Ryder, Dick what's Ryder. he up to? You know what he's Tell up me. to? He's pretending to be a guy on Facebook called Dan Morgan. So if you're currently befriended to Dan Morgan, that's oh, actually Rick. Dan Morgan, isn't he the guy that released the camper video? He, he's a really you know, yeah. Sean, you might be right because that's yeah, the same. Dan Morgan's the guy that released yep. camper video. That's that's a that's Rick's yes, alias. It is. So look, 
<laughs> whoever still believes that, that. Uh, Capri Video is real, <laughs> guys, come on. Well, that's that's a Bigfoot man. Come Big on. <laughs> upload that video. That's a Bigfoot man. Don't take the Capri Video away from uh, me, Sean. Well, well, you it know, looks it's just like that guy from uh, you know West Coast Choppers. <laughs> well, even. <laughs> It's it no Rick Dyer uploading the video isn't the point. That, uh, oh man, when you say that name, it makes, right? makes my it's skin like, hurt. Oh, it's like we just lost half our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just clicking and hanging out. Okay, well let's get off that. Yeah, let's get off that subject. Here's here's let's get back on the 2013 thing. Now, Sean, you recently confessed that you would sell your left kidney to see the Erickson Project movie. Uh. Now. <laughs> In, 2013, in 2013, the NDA expires. Does that mean we're going to get to see the Erickson Project? Is that going to happen or not? What do you think? I don't know. Um, the reason why I brought that video up um, back up again is because every time I watch it, because I'll go through like three months without watching it, and I, I watch it again, it gets me all hyped up. You know, It's really well done. The trailer is really, really well yeah. done. Well, Todd um, Standing can do that, oh, too. Oh, and Todd Standing oh, yeah. is yeah, one of the contributors to this movie. Look, man, we wanted to save the Sasquatch when that last video yeah, came out. I really did. I'm going to go watch it again, man, just yeah. to make fire. <laughs> I think I might put that one back up again. But, yeah, it gets me pumped up. It, <laughs> oh, that's you know, inspiring. It looks legit. They have Mad Moneymaker on there. They have Binder Nago on there. They got that, um, is it yeah, that, um, Dennis Fowl on there, the guy that fed pancakes to Bigfoot. <laughs> McDonald's yeah. pancakes, right? Uh, yeah, McDonald's pancakes. pancakes. <laughs> anyway, I, I want to see it so bad. Um, uh, I do too. I, I, I do too. I'm, I would be lying to say that I wasn't curious to see this infamous movie and especially get a real good HD look at Matilda. Uh, you know, Matilda. Well, I don't know. You were there um, around the fireplace with Wally Harrison. Um, were Were you sitting yeah. there when I asked yeah, him that? I question? was. I know. I, yeah. Go ahead. I know the story. Okay, did he say it was blurry or was it? Because I, I, we heard from Lindsay that it was HD. Yeah. Okay. I, I know that I know that there's a lot of footage, yeah. uh, including the one that Dennis Fowler shot. Now, I know that was HD. Sean, wasn't it supposed to be footage of a giant male one too? That yeah, was, that here's one. the, here's that the one? thing. The, the Matilda footage is not black and white, which a lot of people thought. It, that... Uh, that black and white image was just a still frame that was taken for a newspaper or something to that effect. Now, if I remember correctly, Wally said that the he didn't say that it wasn't HD. I think what he said was it's not as clear as everybody says it is. Something to that effect. Is oh. that correct? It, yeah. Yeah. That's I think correct. it was something to that effect. So, you know, if it's if it's as clear as that still shot, that's cl still clearer than most other yeah. video that we've seen. So, yeah. you know. Well, I don't know what people mean by it. I mean, that's clear as day. Yeah. I mean, Does, that's, yeah. John, do you know who took that? The one thing I could never figure out is who is responsible for taking that footage. Because my understanding was that that biologist that was on the project wouldn't publicly say she saw one or something. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay, here's my, here's my guess. Is that that, that that Matilda footage was taken by, what's her name? It, it's, it's a family out there. And... They, they hoaxed me before. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say it. I don't want to say it. You just okay, did, yeah. Sean. Yeah. The words yeah. come right out of your okay. mouth. So this video, I guess Erickson bought it from them. Okay. And this um, it looks like a Wookiee. Now, uh, and it Wally, probably is a Wookiee. You can see uh, the teeth is black, right? I think that's what like Wally said. Now, yeah. Um, <laughs> Was Black there a did, it, did it have an fame. ammo strap across his chest? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear phaser fire? Did it make a sound? Like, <laughs> did you hear the sound effects of <laughs> in, anywhere in this movie? Now, also contributing to the Erickson project is none other than the Todd, the infamous Todd Standing. He yes. was a contributor to this film as well. I can't help it. I like yeah. Todd now. Yeah. I take back all my pornage videos. His, his one video changed your opinion on him, huh? It did. I, yeah. I, I, I'm such a so <laughs> you know. I'm screwed. I, I, I stay in this field six more months. I'm done. I just got to quit. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll be totally. I'll believe in yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah, you, you're saying you're seeing Bigfoot <laughs> everywhere now. I'll be selling like, toast on eBay with Bigfoot on it. That's it'll be little just like little Bigfoots in there. <laughs> Michael, I you can see, see it coming, man. There's nothing I can. I, th see. I think we're gonna see a uh, Snow Walker Prime <laughs> interviews Joe Black video real soon. We're gonna. 
if we don't put one in a box pretty soon, I'm 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 gonna be yeah. done because there's just not gonna be any logic left in me. Wow, I'm uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about next. Uh, you know, I'm kind of bummed that it's winter already because I now that. <clears throat> No man, no? no. We're super excited. Myself and Bill Brock, and and I think we're gonna suck Dax into our uh, uh, near death experiences. But we're gonna charge into the Great White North, and we're gonna find these tracks. We're gonna try to track one of these good, things down. Good. I don't have the balls to get out there in winter time. So you guys have fun with that. Well, if we can find, if we can cut tracks in the snow, our plan is is to put everything we need in a backpack, strap on cross country skis, and bushwhack until either it climbs a cliff that we can't go up, or we catch up to the uh. thing. Uh, I'm, uh, That's the plan. I, I'm, it's not a very complicated uh, plan, but it's a plan. I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with because you guys had a really successful 2012. I mean, we're not wrapping up the year just yet. It's it's end of November, but you've had a very successful 2012. I mean, Bill Brock made it on the national news. You got it. has got a cast in. So did Lupe Mendoza exactly, with his Team Taser shirt. With with Damian Bravos, yeah, you, which I'm, yes. I'm sporting tonight. The, there you go. The Scooby Doo Sasquatch. And, uh, you got a <laughs> uh, we got a cast. Team Taser has an entry into well, or Bill Brock and Team Taser has an entry into Lauren Colesman's. Well, and you got a movie. Uh, museum. I got and a cast. movie. You had a trackway discovery. I mean, it's been a big year for Team Taser Bigfoot. And Sean was attacked, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> attack, 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 sorry, Bigfoot. Sorry, <laughs> Bigfoot. Out. Can we? Uh, nobody's. How many people watched? Can we edit yeah, that we'll out, bro? See. No, stop, that up. stop levitating, guys. <laughs> stop all this levitating. But, uh, no, it's been a great year. Yeah, it was awesome. Now, well, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of miles, a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of effort. Now, I, mean, that's what I, I, I keep coming back to this mainstreaming of the topic, but, Sean, are you noticing, like, site, your site the stats show, reflecting that trend? Well, to, this month is the biggest month um, we ever had. Um, we're approaching 1.2 million views this month uh, for this month alone. But, Sean, I just have one wow. question. Yeah. Sean? Yeah. Well, you know, are the Amish walk watching? Because if the Amish are wa watching, then we know we've made it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> we have a demographic of Amish people, do we? Well, <laughs> I can probably look like, it up and you know, see what they visit their neighbors well. to get on the Internet. Well, you know, it's interesting. I get a lot of views from New York out of all places. I think that's the the fourth biggest state um, for from an audience. Well, they report a lot of Bigfoots up in New York. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of woodland. You wouldn't think there. about you wouldn't think that, but it's a really squatchy place. <laughs> <over there. laughs> yeah. We've gotten comfortable with that word. I remember a time not too long ago when we were really uncomfortable saying the word squatchy. <laughs> now tell me, if you find something oh, like this in the woods, would that be considered a squatchy place? Wow! Look at this! Wow! Massive. Look at that. Wow. And what was weird was there were no other wow. bones anywhere around. Have you around identified it. the cause of death on that moose? No, but I I think either sometimes winter ticks will make them die in the winter time. I know the thing died in the month Just of February. Just say squatch. Thing is, Just say it was a Bigfoot. Bigfoot, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. That this represents potential Bigfoot kill or territorial marker. Interesting. Now, when you see but something lugged this row. Wherever this thing died, like we, we, Bill Brock and I looked around in there. No other bones, just this one. Um, so no, no rib cage, no hoof, nothing. Well, no. uh, scratches are known to just take the, you know, the rib cage and, yeah, and break like the it. neck off, break the head off, right? Livers, and they'll leave the head, right? It, I think that's what Mad Money. Well, they usually, say. I think they I usually is... take the head and mount them in their caves. <laughs> Where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> it's like a necklace. They wear it around them. <laughs> no, man, all kidding aside, we heard a return during the day. I think it was – you have to ask Bill. I think it was pretty early, like, you know, I don't know, 8 o'clock or something. But just out of the blue, we, we heard this, you know, whoop. Like, like it sounds like a person would go, you know, whoop, like that, kind of like the thing that Wayne does. And uh, <laughs> I mean I heard it, and I don't hear that well. And so Bill made a yell, and like – Five minutes later, it responded, and then I made a yell, and once again, but you know, we're like recording, trying to get it on, on tape, and you know, record for two minutes, nothing happens. You shut the thing off, and then two minutes later, you you hear this noise, and you're like, holy crap, like yeah. what is that? Because it sounds like a person returning that call to you, but here we are, we drive thirty miles down like a dead end road, and there's no other people up well, there. You know, I I know that problem all too well, and one night we were we were up in the Sierras, and and we had some sounds and. One thing I want to recommend 
is if you get a little MP3 recorder like this, they're like 30 bucks or something like that. Um, you can find them online. It'll record like four or five hours of, of audio, actually seven or eight hours of audio if you have the settings right. You can just yeah, that's what turn I it on, hands on and leave it. Just leave it at the campsite. Just run in. You know, once you start your activity. Well, would that pick up something that you heard here way far yeah, you off? Know, don't keep it around the campfire, you know, where it's going to pick up all the conversations. I, what I did was I put it like a, about 100 yards away from the campsite. And, and you can amplify everything and you can hear stuff on it. I mean, it, it's... It's not perfect, but you have to amplify. And well, I mean, what this case was like, bro, it was like a day, you know, kind of windy. It would get quiet, and, and it was a long ways off, but we could hear it. I'm just wondering if it would yeah, pick it up. Yeah, probably. It, it, you, it depends. I, I'm, I'm not going to say probably, but it depends. There's a better chance, though, that you'll get it if your camera's not running. Then, you know, you'll have something at least. Something to go back and Well, record. anyways, that's where we're at now. We're going we're gonna to try to record. I've heard this sound a couple times, and I'm determined, man, to get it on, on tape one way or the other so yeah. I can figure out what the hell it's, it is. Uh, I mean, it could be an owl or something during the day, but it sounds like a person, you know, going whoop back right. at you. No, I, I've, uh, I've heard weird. the whoop, you know, and we, there's – I've heard weird sounds, and I think most of them are owls. You know, I think owls and coyotes and even foxes – make up probably 99% of what people say they they hear maybe maybe 98% I don't know but I'm going to I'm going to guess that a large percentage of what people say oh I heard something strange I, I've never heard before are coming from one of these animals like a fox a coyote or an owl cuz they have a those animals have a really wide range a very big vocabulary uh, compared to other animals. Well, this is why I think it's really important to to record it. You know, I mean, I can say I heard that that you know we heard this sound, and I can say, Bill, did you hear the sound? But it's like if you have the sound on recording now, you can take it and compare it to other known sounds. You can let other people listen to it. So I mean, it's very frustrating when you have those. Uh, this is why I'm saying like I'm losing my uh, what is it something <laughs> objectivity, yeah. I guess, because yeah. you do you get you get frustrated. I see why people yeah. would you you keep doing it. You hear this stuff, you can't do anything with it because you don't right. have it in a format that you can manipulate it and right. share it. So it's important to record it. It is. You know what what is frustrating though with uh with these recording devices and and camera recording devices is the the frequency range. You don't tend to get a lot of the lower end frequency. So if you hear a sound, you might not have the weight behind that sound. You know, I know you spoke of that in the past where you heard like a, a some type of snort that you you were pretty sure wasn't a moose snort or or whatever a deer snort and i think it was you and you said but what you can't hear in the recording was the weight the girth of the sound you know i've heard that quite frequently and i, I know that's you know something that sound was recorded about five miles north of where bill and i spent this these last couple yeah. days that's that's uh sounds like you gotta oh the same area did did i tell you about the the, the border patrol agent that related the um, story? You told, you've told I... me but why don't we tell our audience well, I haven't told Damien. Let's, let's, let's share. Let's share. That's what we're all about. Yeah. Damien, uh, not Damien, uh, 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 Bill, man, is fearless. Goes right up to the, this. You get it by Jackman. There's a ton of Border Patrol agents because apparently they don't want the Mexicans. I guess it's the Canadians we don't want coming in illegally right. or something. I'm not sure why they're up there. But <laughs> Bill goes over and he starts talking to this guy. And I go over. When I get over there, the woman Border Patrol agent goes, you know, you guys hunting Bigfoot? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you know, I got my thing and stuff. And she says, <laughs> Well, my brother-in-law saw one. He's dead now. He worked in the woods. Just like that, you know? And I said, well, yeah, could it yeah. have been a bear? And she goes, no. And then she, and then Bill says, where was it? She goes, oh, right here in Jackman. And then the next thing she said, are you guys hunting Bigfoot? And I go, yeah. And she goes, make sure to have your Hunter Orange on. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was it. I mean, how bizarre really is that? Really nonchalant, wow. huh? Like, like it wasn't a big deal. Like this was a part of. The guy, the guy next to her was in his, you know, 20s, and I'm looking at him trying to see anything, in, like his muscles, you know, like he's going to smile like it's a joke. You know, <laughs> they weren't joking. They were dead serious about it. You know and what's then, interesting is um, how, how did you know you were Bigfoot hunters? Well, because we had our, you know, I had this. Bill and I both had Tammy Murray's necklaces on. I didn't have this T-shirt, yeah. but we had Team Taser all over us. No, no, I, th I think Bigfoot doesn't have, have a... Have a Type of look or vibe to give off because, <laughs> because uh, Justin was telling me a story how he was driving uh, around like looking for deer up at um, Shaver Lake in the Fresno, and and right away he saw these these two guys just walking along the uh, 
side of the road. And he goes, you guys are Bigfoot hunters, right? They go, yep. <laughs> <laughs> how did they, how did, how did they know? Did, did they give off the kind of vibe? I think, I think, it's, the, uh, be, I think it's because they're in camo, you have a camera, and no gun. That's probably what it is. <laughs> oh, but we had okay. guns. We had yeah, guns. Like, what, what, you know, like, they can't say, like, you're scouting, or are you scouting, or are you looking for birds? Why, I mean, how do you, how do you get... Bigfoot, you know, like yeah, but know. where were they? they? This was in an area people see Bigfoot in, right? Yeah, it's, a yeah, spot. it's our, it's our, yeah. our uh, area hot spot right now outside the lower <laughs> Sierras. Oh, see, it makes sense. They know the alien hunters and Bigfoot hunters are going up in it's there. Like to... Hanging out of Roswell, yeah, looking yeah. at a guy with a pair of binoculars. You're, you're a UFO hunter, aren't you? Yeah. That's not <laughs> like that in Maine. That's what's really strange in Maine. It's not like the West Coast where everybody sees Bigfoot. In Maine people, you don't very. I've never been to a place where. You know, we talk to her, then we talk to the people at the bakery, and they tell us an exact same you know, story. And, and I am we, surprised it's taken Maine this long to come out of the Bigfoot closet, if you will. Because if any place in the in the continental U.S. would reflect the type of habitat and 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 isolation, or or have the the habitat and isolation that a creature like this would need. It would be Maine, and I'm I'm just surprised that you know we've been reporting them in Ohio as far as Ohio for years. Maine has been relatively quiet up until up until recently. It's taken. I'll tell you what I think, Ro, and it's really almost shocking to me because you know I've I grew up here. I've been here all my life, and and have gone everywhere. It's like when I was a little kid, I was going. I was my dad would take me way up in the middle of no place. We would just go snowshoeing and ice fit, you know, in really remote areas. Never heard any stories about Bigfoot. But I think, <laughs> I think that this is, I know for a fact there's a good number of sightings because people are relating the stories to me now. So I'm thinking that people are seeing this thing, but they don't tell very many people or they don't tell anybody. You know, maybe they tell one or two people in their family, hey, I saw, I saw whatever, and they'll say something, you know, oh, yeah, great-great-grandfather saw one of those. Like they don't know really what it is, but what, what are they going to do? Who are they going to go yeah. tell? They're not going to call a game ward. They're not going to call the cops. They're not going to. Call Bufo. Right, right. They just don't do that, you know. That's interesting. So I think there's, I think that there's, there's sightings. You just have to be, have some finesse because usually a lot of people go up and you talk to them, and they, they even if they've seen one, they'll just shut you down. They do not want to talk. Well, you know to you know what's about odd it. is They're that crazy. when I was up towards Gold Lake this uh, summer with Justin, and we'd gone up a number of times. Like I said, we we spent a total of maybe ten days up there over a stretch of a month and a half. Um, when you go to the town of Bassett's, no one will talk to you. It's it. Really? You go there, it's like, and I know Bigfoot hunters are up there. I know people are talking about it up there. Justin's story is pretty well known up there. But you go. Why do you think I it is? Know. Bro? People are like, uh, what do you guys know about Bigfoot? We don't have those here. We never heard of that. It's like, <laughs> really? Really? This is NorCal. They don't cross the town like, line. They're over we don't the have town. those here. <laughs> You know, no, the we don't river. know anything. They can't about it. Go and it's so obvious that they're that they're just avoiding the subject when they say things like, um, you know, they they might not say we don't have those here, but they say something like, no, I don't really, I don't really think that goes on here. It, it's it's just the way they say it where you, oh, it's stuff, obvious they're avoiding. Stuff happens. Up yeah, there. stuff happens to the farmers out there, right? To the herders. Yeah, we herders. uh talked to a sheep herder who is like moving moving his herd. They have public grazing up there where you pay a fee, and he's like never coming mm -hmm. here again. He's like, it's not, yeah, really? it's like never coming up here again. I can't explain it. The way the sheep are disappearing, it's not. What? He's like, uh, I've, it, it cost me too much money to graze up here. You want to know somebody else that tells me about sheep yeah. disappearance that you should probably talk to? You know J.C. Johnson, yeah. right? I got to tell Yeah, he'll tell you stories out on the Navajo land of the sheep herders claiming they lose sheep. Yeah, we were in the process of watching that. Well, they were in the process of moving the sheep out of there because they were like, there's Bigfoot here. We we're not. They didn't say Bigfoot. There's like there's something here that is walking away with the sheep, not ki <laughs> walking away, yeah, not, not dragging, dragging them. them, walking no. away with the sheep. Well, you know that's interesting. So here's the thing. I've already tried a chicken for bait. What you should do is get some baby sheep, get up there, stake those babies out, put some uh, plot watchers on them. That was the plan. We that was the plan. We were trying to go back. We, we, we tried to go back and find them. Like you know, let's get some money together. Let's go. Let's let's see if we can buy buy uh, buy a head from them. And um, 
and bring it up to the side. Well, buy the whole sheep. Sheep and, for uh, cheap. And get yeah, the whole we, sheep. we were, we were thinking bait. of buying a whole sheep and, and taking it on up, throwing it in the back of the truck and rolling <laughs> up there. But um, that's awesome. You know, they were he- a little hesitant, and then when we went back to go and try and meet up with them again, they weren't around. We were we had spent the day kind of trying to find these guys again. But um, yeah, I think there's there's something to that for sure. But they the, they were no, very I mean, specific most, about the fact that the sheep were something was walking away with the sheep. See, I think that's almost the same story that J.C. Johnson tells. Yeah, sheep just don't disappear like that. Yeah, you know, not up there. Not, Not usually. usually. I mean, we <laughs> usually there's a big pile of blood. Yeah. There's a drag well, we got marks. Coyotes, critical. You got plenty of coyotes up there, and I think a bear could nab a sheep fairly easy. Uh, Cougars. Cougars, exactly. But um, they, the way they said it, it was very strange. I think they expect they expect to lose a head or two, you know. But they said we we're losing way too much. Something is walking away with our sheep, and we're out of here. No, I think that live bait, I mean, I know it's kind of a little bit of a joke, but if you want to catch an elusive critter like a coyote, this coyote traps where you put live bait in there because they can't yeah. resist it. And, I mean, if you talk to anybody that tries to raise chickens, you'll have animals that will break into your cage to get those chickens. So you can imagine you put that in a, in a box trap of some sort, the animal's going to go right in there. And if Bigfoot is walking away with sheep, yeah, it makes perfect sense to me yeah. to, to, to use a live bait to lure yeah. one in. Yeah, I think we we have a whole lot of plans for this year. You know, we just oh, well, last throw you could find Bigfoot hookers. Ah, that is the, <laughs> see, they're, it's just that the hookers themselves are so hard to find. The Bigfoot hookers, <laughs> but you find one of them, you can bring in all the Bigfoot you want. All the Bigfoot. Now, uh, which is Sean, uh, can you pull up the 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 Vermont game cam that you were talking about today? Yeah, let's pull, pull that, that up, up right now. Um, let's take a look at Sean's screen here. Yeah, um, Phil recently did a breakdown too, okay. but I'll, I'll post that later. Um, you know, it's um, it's quite interesting. So, so is, I got this first photo. This here. is um, going to be the subject of tonight's um, finding Bigfoot, correct? Okay. Yeah. Now in this Vermont, a, in Central didn't Vermont. Did Nadia post? What was that? Why no? What's that woman? Why no? something? The woman that that posted something that said look like an yeah, owl. I think I've yeah. heard that before. I think um, that is. Sean knows who. I think that's about. the that's yeah. the pretty much known. Uh, the known. Uh, what do you call it? Solution to this problem? Uh, <laughs> to this photo? <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good <laughs> you know, solution to me. Like, I think you see the legs of some little critter underneath, and then the, wall, the you see the back of the owl swooping in or something. It looks a hell of a lot more like an owl to me than it does a, a Bigfoot. Uh, I really almost – I almost bought that ghillie suit theory that came out like a, a year ago. It really – this. It looks a lot like It a really did look too. like that. The owl was a little bit uh, of work to – You know what the hell with it? That is Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. no it's, um, it's too why, big. Why complicate my life Michael, at this point? There's a mother, Sasquatch, and a baby. <laughs> I think, I, think I see twins. <laughs> That's like here. Let me show you. That's like uh, you can see his fingers. I'm not saying it's a bigfoot. Well, you know something about this it's baby. It's probably a bigfoot. It's probably Sean. a bigfoot. Huh? Well, I think the thing. If you look at like other primates, they will hold their. But sometimes you'll see them and not even know they have a baby. I don't think it's such a stretch that. I mean, occasionally you'll hear people say, "Oh, you know, they think there was a baby," but I, I think that some of these sightings, they actually have babies with them, and that it's recognized as something else because they're keeping it, you know, so tight to them because that's what. You know, if you look at like, uh, well, mostly chimps. You know, sometimes the babies will hide underneath them and they'll be running away. But I, I don't think. I mean, no. Yeah. Uh, that's either a ghillie yeah. suit or an owl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or a bigfoot. Yeah. It's an interesting <laughs> picture, but yeah, I the more the more um, I see the owl, the more I look at it, the more I see the owl. But it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. I I have a feeling they're coming up with squatch tonight. Yeah, there was no, there were no before and afters of this photo, Sean. No, it's just this. It's just this. I think there's um, a picture of a coyote. Hey, Steve Coles did a, an extensive report on this one, and he took into account of the, the moonlight, the, the I don't know, temperature, well, everything. Apples on the ground, right? Yes, apples on the ground, and that's actually, uh, like, coyotes on the ground too at one point. So there's, there's, there's two, there's two shots, a coyote, and then can you got an this. owl take a coyote? 
Well, no, but you think about it. If you've got a bunch of apples there, you're going to have rodents. You're going to have all kinds of stuff, you know, mostly yeah. rodents at night eating yeah. on that, which are what owls feed upon, and it would make perfect sense that an owl would swoop down under an apple tree and grab a rodent. I mean, yep. that just, yeah, that'd be the most reasonable explanation. Yeah, it'd be very, very interesting to see what Moneymaker says. Um, oh, it's Bigfoot. <laughs> Lactose intolerant Bigfoot. <laughs> Mr. M, with the cool hair. Good times. Yeah, the uh, the new Bobo hair. <clears throat> well, this... yeah, when this show comes on tonight, we're going to be talking about this too. So we can, <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. Yeah, we, we're doing a live commentary. Yes. Of the show. We uh, we went through some rough spots uh, trying to get that off the ground last week. Um, but we did it, and we're going to try and uh, do it again tonight, and hopefully it'll go a lot better. Uh, mm-hmm. What is we have a, a a guest joining us, not a, not anyone well yeah. known, but just a friend of the shows. Is that correct, Sean? Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a good good friend of mine, <laughs> and, um, and his name is Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Martin, <laughs> yeah, really great guy. Um, he he's he's very funny. I okay. think you know. So let's let's see let's see if we can bring his A yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. Now we uh, <laughs> just so people know, uh, if we're let's take a minute to talk about. Is anybody yeah, watching uh, us right now? Anybody watching NL? Well, <laughs> if you are, you'll happen to you'll be the first to know that we are launching uh, a couple of new shows for 2013. Um, we're trying. We might do a test of uh, our late night show. Um, with the host to be announced, um, he knows who it is, but um, you guys, very famous, uh, famous guy. Uh, yes. person, and the best person that I can think of to host Team Taser after hours. So that will be. I am tickled, yeah. pink man. So we're gonna we're gonna have a new show called uh, I think we're call, calling it Team Taser after hours. It's gonna be um, airing a- every night after Finding Bigfoot, so we can talk about the show. <clears throat> so. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I think we may even have a third show. It, Sundays might be an all podcasting day. It depends on how much money. We're totally going to control. Yeah, Sunday. it depends on how much money we can raise to support all these shows because they cost money out of my pocket, people. So if, if you get a chance, <laughs> you know, visit our sponsors, buy our T-shirts, click on some ads, you know, do all that kind of good stuff. Keep the free content coming. All right, so let's get back to the show. We'll get back to these plugs again at the end. You know how we like to do our. 15 minute plug session at the end of the show. What else is going on? What else what else can we talk about? We are going to do a year end wrap up where we will cover in detail all the news of 2012. Well, a lot yeah, happened. Let's go to the let's go to the um the chat board and see who is in the chat board, chat room right now. And uh, if anybody has any questions, anything they want to talk about, Bring want us to bring up an address, Sean. What is the big story of the week for you? Yeah, well, you know, uh, one of the big things is a is a n- new player in the um, breakdown video industry, <laughs> <laughs> and that's Phil yeah, Poling. Again, we've, we've he's been doing a lot of great. Yeah, we we talked oh, about wow. that last week. Today we... alone, within the yeah yeah um, within the past seventeen hours, he's posted. Like four, five breakdowns. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what you guys don't know about Phil, Phil Poling? Yeah. Is he just recently figured out how to clone himself? So, <laughs> he's like three of those guys now. So that's why he's yeah. cranking them out one after the team, another. The team, Either that or he's just not sleeping. Yeah, the Team Taser um, base, the the core group. Um, I mean, Team Taser's huge. We, we're a Facebook group. We got 500 plus people in there, and we're all we're all Taser. But the Team Taser admins, if you will, our admin base is growing, and the Team Taser crew content providers is growing. Now, is that getting what? What? What do you have in store for 2013? Are you adding anyone new? You, you're taking new people out onto your expeditions. We're seeing a lot of new videos from different people. What do you think, Michael? What's the outlook for Taser 2013, year of the Sasquatch? We're going to put one in a box. That's that's the ultimate plan, right, right, Ro? We're n- Anybody that we can work with that will help us put this thing in a box. We're, gonna, we're putting we're one in the box on the East Coast and the West Coast. And then we're going to breed them together and produce a hybrid. Nice. <laughs> that will learn to ride a unicycle. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm curious. You put up a new video, uh, Michael, and it's called um, Shimp. 
behavior same as Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's a really, really interesting video. Like, what are you trying to um, get at with that video? It's, uh, well, you know, here's the thing. I've been pondering this for a while, and I'm not the only one. I mean, Wayne Burton, he I don't want to speak for him, but I kind of got the impression he kind of thought they had chimp-like behavior. And if you watch that video, those chimps come out, they throw dirt and rocks, they throw sticks, they try to club the, the, the leopard with sticks. They also do this thing where they raise up their hair and they do this agitation behavior, which people often report with Sasquatch. So in that tiny little clip, you're seeing a whole bunch of behaviors that we see the eyewitnesses report to us. So, you know, I think we can draw, you know, it's kind of dangerous, but I think it's fairly safe to draw a few parallels. If if these re, if these chimps act the same way, and now Roe's going to take off with the, you know, <laughs> what happens to the habituators and the, yeah. the chimps. We, but, yeah, I think there's some parallels that it would be safe to draw, but maybe these things act like giant yesterday chimps. Yesterday was uh, a content day for Michael and I. We went uh, posting crazy with, with chimp stuff. You guys went yeah, we went ape shit, if you will. <laughs> nice one, Sean. Um, we had, uh, I think, total three chimp videos that we posted, all behavioral stuff. One, bonobos, and where bonobos are kind of – start beginning to adapt they're evolving I, I i think it's safe to say that they are evolving Man, that's shocking to watch that thing walk watch right. it walk it is it walks like like you would expect sasquatch exactly to walk, or a person it, to walk. it i mean it is comfortable on two feet it's holding its food its baby and it's just like okay yep. i'm at the grocery it's like it's at the fucking grocery store you know <laughs> yeah. just like picking shit off yeah. the shelf and stuff i know i need a little sugar cane i need a little papaya it's amazing you know? Stupid baby, shut up, you know, and just and, and, and it, it just it, it's natural. And it's funny to me that the bonobos of all the chimps that the females display and it's and I do you think there's a relationship to the fact that they are becoming a sexual culture, that the bonobo culture is really sexually driven? That is that part of the reason why maybe the females have a little bit more control in, in a bonobo with society? I, I really don't know. Well, I'm though. saying That's it is. I'm saying well, pussy controls well, it all. Sex, sex, sex is a very powerful motivator in every species. I think. You know. Well, um, you know, we're the way we are because of tail. female selection. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, m men tend to be human males tend to be more aggressive than uh, overall. I mean, look at serial killers. Female serial killers are extremely rare, but male serial killers, I mean, that's the, yeah. the primarily we're aggressive. And we're aggressive in part because women chose aggressive men because it could protect the clan. So we're a bunch of fucking assholes because of women's selection. And chimps are it's assholes, assholes too. What do you think of that hippie <laughs> that I posted trying to make nice with the chimps that gave him a warning? <laughs> he should have stayed off the island, man. They stay gave on human him island, stay a off warning island. and he called them back. He was asking yeah. to be – he was asking – that was like mur suicide by chimp. It was like he was trying to commit suicide like Grizzly Man was. You know, it was like, ah, oh, that green. Well, you know, it brings up a good point. What do, you, what do you think would happen? Like I've always – you know, people say they get driven out of the woods, and I'm like, you should press press the issue and see what Sasquatch looks like. But, I mean, would the, would you be facing a similar – It's really hard. It's really hard to move forward when your legs are shaking like fucking blunt, you know, or, right. or not, your knees are knocking together. It's really hard to move forward. And look at the people that disappear in the woods that don't yeah. come back. So. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't want a, a chimp nine feet tall with, with chimp behavior and chimp attitude. And no, no, that's a that's a recipe it, for Sasquatch rape. <laughs> you just have your arms ripped off your body, <clears throat> like like that chimp almost ripped the arms off yeah. that researcher's body. I mean, he was trying to bite his fingers I off. Think I it think tore, it, uh, it tore his ear. His ear was like um, like if you read about it, his ear yep. was com uh, almost completely torn off. He had lost a finger or two, and his face was was ripped open. So you know that video is low res, so you don't see the gore, fortunately. But he he got. Well, you see how Bill and I go into the woods, and I mean, we're not out there. We, we have no intent upon killing a Sasquatch, but any opportunity I have, I am armed to the teeth. Because if you're out there with Wayne's sound call blasting, and people are telling you they're seeing things 9 and 10 feet tall that weigh a 1,000 pounds, I, I want some weaponry. Yeah. <laughs> just to be you know, just to be on the yeah. safe side. I, I think I'm going to have to start arming myself next year. Because we want to get as close to this thing as we possibly can, and the only way we can do that and feel safe about it is, is to, you know, be armed and be confident. Yeah. I, I I think I think uh, I think it's it's pretty safe bet. Um, 
primates are not predictable. I mean, enough. if this thing is scooping up sheep, what's to stop it from scooping up a person? Missing four one one. I'll eventually, I'll eventually get you that book. It's sitting somewhere. Yeah, up I'd there. love to read that. I book, promise, bro. I promise, I will get it. You know what? I have. I thought you said Damien was going to show up. What happened? Is he going to like show up I after probably. the podcast? Probably. He'll, he'll probably show up at the end. <laughs> Damien. <laughs> I miss so Damien. So do I. But you know what? I don't think. Um, I don't think he realizes that our show is on every Sunday at every other Sunday at three. So. Uh... Even, yeah, he, he shows up on the alternate Sundays yeah. and we're not here, and he thinks we're just visiting. Him. <laughs> and, uh, he, he's always uh, he usually the the first people yeah. on. Well, um, but this Sunday was a tri- got... was tricky because we we broadcasted last Sunday, but uh, my next my next yeah. three weekend. I actually told people yeah. that it wasn't we weren't going to have the cod pass podcast. Yeah, today. well, oh, there's the uh, guy getting mauled by the chimp. Well, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Say something, Sean. <laughs> what was that? Oh. <laughs> the um, the uh content that we have planned for the month of December is not going to be live. What we're going to do is do a couple of pre-recorded shows with Guy Edwards and we are going to do the full 2012 year in review uh, cryptology year. Including Guy Edwards levitating. Yeah, and all, live. all the good stuff. We'll, we'll live. cover everything from... from what, yeah, isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Look, at, I'm watching the guy get beat up by what, two yeah. chimps? Three the games? other guy just watches. Well, I don't. Why did I think it was a safe dude. call? I think if he interfered, he gets mal- mal- <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If, if he didn't jump in the water, dude, he would have. Oh yeah, that chimp went yeah. after him as far as he could. Look at this. Boom. Why are people watching? I mean, the, look, the chimps are helping each other, but the humans aren't. That tells you something <laughs> about humans, doesn't it? Just the guy with the camera. I'll be over here on the boat. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking humans! I don't trust humans anymore after watching this. <laughs> You're going to go live with for the Sasquatches. Those, those, yeah. For those people who are just listening, you need to go and um, search Crazy Chimp Attack Caught on Tape. And it's two researchers that walk onto a chimp rehab – I guess it's a rehabilitation island of sorts. And uh, they get a warning. And as the the pack of chimps starts walking away, one of the other guys decides that he wants to end it on a happier note. So he calls the chimps back, and they <laughs> rip the shit out of them. So, I mean, this dude, it looks like a freaking jujitsu master just rolling this dude around. I mean, this little four-foot-tall chimp is just tossing this six-foot-tall homo sapien around like, like a Gracie. rag doll. I mean, it's, it's brutal. The guy's trying to get away. He's, I mean, he fell in the water, and chimps hate water, and that was his saving grace. But the chimp... Followed. Well, well, no. The rest of the story is, Ro, that the croc oh, ate yeah. him. He fell in the water and the crocodiles <laughs> ate him. But if you tangle with a chimp, you deserve to get eaten by a croc- crocodile. You know, if, if a chimp says "stay the fuck away" and you go, oh, "I want to play. Can I pick bugs off you?" Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna eat. You're gonna get. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna get chimp balls slapped across your forehead. Let me ask you something, Ro. Why? Why were they <laughs> laying down? Why were the humans? Because they're down? stupid For hippies. <laughs> Oh, come on now. Let's not insult hippies. Well, stupid PETA hi- hippies. I don't know if those yeah. guys are hippies. Those guys are yeah. nervous. That's Dude. what they are. Oh. <laughs> Amazing something. The way that. he just flies through the air and yeah. tackles that dude. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Okay. The thing didn't yeah. kill him. Let's make this video go When viral. you watch that video on the thumbnail next to it, you see all the people that have been mutilated by oh. chimps. Yeah. You, you I that? can't even look at those. Like the lady who lost her face. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! And for those of you that are still trying to find that video, just just go to Rose YouTube channel. Yeah, it's on uh, the Bigfoot Report YouTube slash the Bigfoot Report. And speaking of, we are producing a lot between Phil Pauling, uh, Michael Merchant, and myself. We're putting out probably a dozen videos a week between us three. So what we've decided to do is put together an aggregator. Sean is hosting it. There is now on the Bigfoot Evidence blog the third or fourth tab over says Team Taser. You click on that tab, and you'll see all—not all, but a collection of our our trending videos. And some of them aren't half bad. Yeah, there's some good stuff there, yeah. and they're and they're they're really uh, <laughs> starting to take off. So thank you, everybody. Especially Rose stuff. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Rose I, stuff actually looks like he's a you know editor. Well, you know, some of us have, <laughs> some of us are trying to make a uh, trying to make. A I know. Might as well just editor, call it so. Rose uh, page. I can't. I it's my yeah. business card. You know, I have to make it look. Well, it shows. I enjoy watching your videos, bro. They, they they have a nice fine polish. I've noticed to them. that yours looks a little more polished too these days. I've been copying you in 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 my own crude way. I'm trying to learn the master. I'm trying to learn from the guy with the fancy hat. <laughs> I am. Um, I need to. We need an update. Is the beard contest over? I didn't shave this week. 
No, no, okay. no. You want to update? Can we get, a, up, can we get update, an update from KV? Oh. I'm going to answer. She's shaking her head. That you can't have an update. You can have a, I'll tell you what, you can have this kind of an update. Come on. No. Just, no. Uh, <laughs> no KV is camera comes. shy. Yeah. yeah, I'm camera shy. No, um, no, it still goes on till December 31st. I haven't put up, I've been a, a week behind in putting up, um, like the weekly photos. So that's why I'm, I didn't want to do the update because I'm behind. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Hey, sh so the beard contest is still on, which is why I haven't shaved. I'm growing it for support. And um, like I said, if you guys want to win the contest, go over and, you know, be nice to Richter and Tammy Murray and send them gifts and money and, I don't know, whatever else you can think of, degrade the other guys in the contest. I've seen some pretty gnarly looking beards showing up, man. I've been, I've... It's scary, man. You look at it. It's a, they look like they're a biker yeah. gang. It's, a, it's, it's looking tough. It's a tough room. I can't grow a beard. This is like... This is like two weeks for me, so that this is my contribution. I think in in uh, I shaved yesterday, Rob. I'm gonna just leave the mustache in for for November. Isn't there a, like? So who's in the competition? I I thought I saw Justin Smia. Was is he in the competition? Uh, yeah, he is. Really well. Did you hear that? Kathy says that Justin's doing really well in the contest. Dang. Man, he first the guy gets first won. the guy does better than everybody else at Sasquatch hunting. Now he's got the beard contest too. Yeah. What the hell? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's hoaxing the oh. beard contest. Oh! <laughs> uh, maybe he's hoaxing that. We might need to know. make him take a polygraph. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your beard? <laughs> Justin, I think you're spinning us a yarn. <laughs> I think that's somebody else's beard. Yeah, I can't do the contest. Asian people don't grow beard. Yeah. I mean, mine is mine is pretty thin. This is weeks, actually. This is like two. Well, weeks. we need a contest for the uh, minionettes now, and I don't really. Know as long as it doesn't involve them. growing hair, I'm down. <laughs> right. So, so we need a good suggestion for the minionettes because I've I've been told the minionettes want a contest. Uh, how about point. how about a bikini contest? Like I said, I'm open to <laughs> some suggestions. Best best. I don't know if that would be the best. Contest, best hooker bro. walk. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more along you know apple pie type of contest. Oh, okay. right? <laughs> Oh my goodness! All right, somebody is asking me the name of the uh, uh, the bonobos walking on on two feet uh, video. Uh, that would be called Charlie. Uh, Homo sapiens are not the only apes walking on two legs. That's the name of it, and it's on the YouTube slash the Bigfoot Report. You can find it there. Anyways, oh, on the tab that Sean did, that's yeah. cool. The are tab, you checking it out now? I really like that. Hey, Sean, why don't you put that tab on the screen so we can show our listeners your your? Okay, so. I don't understand how the algorithm works, but it looks like the trending topics will show up on on the latest feed. But I also have the top feed, which is like it shows um Rose okay. blog. Oh, awesome! Those are the you articles know, it, I, I I've been writing. Yep, articles and the videos, so it's mixed yeah, mixed nice. together. And um, below that is the Facebook. Oh, cool! Uh, like button. Okay, so. Uh, once you become, once you hit the like button, you instantly Love become monster. a fan. Mm -hmm. So when you become a fan, everything, every time uh, Michael or um, Team Taser post something, you'll see it on your Facebook feed. That's pretty cool. So, so uh, er everyone should click like. For Which no means reason. I don't have to spam each one of your individual channels anymore. Exactly. <laughs> you get it all. You get it all for free. You don't have to go through so, all the work. You, you know, know, I gotta say that Bigfoot Evidence is my favorite Bigfoot blog because I'm, uh, I, and I'm not the only one. I think. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Meldrum also says that he reads Bigfoot, the Bigfoot Evidence blog. Yeah, he doesn't he, always read Bigfoot, <laughs> but when he does, yeah. <laughs> now because he's the most interesting man in the in Big That Curry. being said, a lot of new blogs have shown up this year. That, like I said, the the subject is mainstreaming, and I've seen a lot of new effort this year. We're seeing, we're seeing. I, I mean, I'm a member of at least twenty Facebook groups. I can't even keep up anymore, and. There's a blog post after blog post, and I've seen some really good ones. I know the investigative stuff is coming from uh, Steve a a uh, a Acorn. Alcorn. I'm sorry. I keep saying Acorn. Mm -hmm. Steve, Steve Alcorn, Alcorn has been doing a great job. I started that. That's yeah, my fault, it's really. all yours. I never said it before. Steve Alcorn has his um, Sasquatch de – not Sasquatch detective. That Steve calls uh, – but he is a Sasquatch yes. detective. He's got his video, his blog that's doing really well. He does the investigative work. And now Melissa from the Bigfoot Chicks, her blog has been doing very well too. She's been focusing primarily on early wild man history. 
Um, not so much. Mm-hmm. It's not always Bigfoot, but there's really some great eight stories that she's been digging up from the 1800s. And well, they didn't call it Bigfoot back then either, uh, you know. And that's the other thing too. When you look at those early things, they don't gorillas weren't discovered until like the mid lowland gorillas to like the mid 18 1850 mm-hmm. so you know if you had a sighting in the 1800s they're not going to call it a gorilla right. yeah right. Uh, exactly i mean a even wild man or a monkey before the discovery of gorilla um i think the word gorilla is actually it actually means um a hairy woman really or something like that oh i yeah, don't old, they, they old, had their own hairy patty, woman huh? yeah so um that's because they it looks like uh, a person to them you know and um, they really have no way of describing it. And if you look in old dictionaries, Bigfoot's not in there. I mean, that's yeah. a relatively, you know, Sasquatch isn't in there. Those are relatively new term yeah. terminology. So you you have to look for wild yeah. man. Yeah, it, it gorilla actually um, derives from the Greek word, meaning um, uh, a tribe of hairy women. Dude, dropping. Wow, you are right. He's he's Damn. dropping some you fucking on knowledge Jeopardy. on you right now. <laughs> Team Taser dropping knowledge all day long. Yeah, so you can understand, you know, wow. these uh, Bigfoot chicks already go when they talk about the hairy And man, he's Asian, so you, you know, know his math is good, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> and he plays the violin. Uh, yeah, I know. You fucking, uh, did you and all your siblings have to take piano lessons when you were, like, five years old? Yeah, and violin, piano, yeah. We, we all have, yeah. Uh, <laughs> since we're not Filipinos, we're not very good at um, karaoke. I was, well, that's why I had to start playing guitar because I couldn't keep up with all my cousins in karaoke. So, <laughs> anyways, what a what a day, fellas! I'm uh, kind of losing my voice. Um, oh, yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm gonna let you guys uh, take over for a minute well, or two. Oh, wait, hey, wait. What's the um? I want you guys to weigh in. What do you think of the people that were doing the the litmus test, Provo Bigfoot? You know, where where the guy with the sweatshirt walks in the background. As the guy is listening to the girl talk about laying little pieces of paper on the ground to measure the ozone, and he's not even filming her. He's panning around the freaking pocket brush. Oh, you mean Provo Canyon 2? I have not seen that one yet, but... Um, what? It, was, it wasn't but, on your site? Okay. <laughs> no, it's basically, it's, um, it's a brand new video. It says Provo Canyon, but it's not by the same guys, right? It's by different people. No, I think it's somebody trying to cash in on the popularity of the original one and right it looks back. to me like it's total BS but okay. so but is it an obvious fake or are they like really trying to make it look like a a real sighting Michael no no I mean well, the thing is Sean it's one of those things where the activity taking place while the guy is filming doesn't make any sense the actual shot itself is a bad I mean it's off in the distance you know the guy <laughs> pans the, I think the creature walks from uh, left to right but it just, you know, it's it's bipedal humanoid. Right. But the thing is that the front end of the story is that supposedly they're doing a science thing for school and they're testing the oh. ozone. And she's putting these little pieces of paper on the ground. It's not very scientific. Uh huh. It, it, it's it's kind of a crock. Is that the one where they where they said we didn't really see it until we until we got right. home? Right. Right. Oh. oh, such a convenient excuse. <laughs> yeah, isn't that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't really think it. it was on there. You know, I just love it when they use that. No, I'm actually going to find that video um, and then show people what we're talking about here. Oh, here it is. Um, and then let's All see. Right. Let me put it up let's on the see screen. Let's see if we can uh, watch it. Thanks here. for covering. I had to had to get something for my throat. All right. All right. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up that video that Michael's talking about. It's called Provo Canyon Bigfoot Encounter yeah, Two. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. What we're seeing here is some guy filming his notebook. Well, it's a guy and a girl. He's filming the girl. The girl supposedly is testing for ozone, and she's babbling on about how that the ozone up there, you know, should be less because the ozone is in the cities where the factories are. And then she goes over. She puts this little piece of paper on the ground, puts a rock on it, like it's somehow going to measure the ozone. And meanwhile, the guy does just a random pan of the area for no reason. Mm-hmm. And captures, you know, Sasquatch. Yeah, this looks suspect yeah. the way the camera's moving. But didn't see it while he was filming, you know. Didn't see the creature. No. I'm going to say that. If I ever hoax anything, I'm always <laughs> going to say, I was, I'm always going to remember that line. I didn't really see it until I got home and watched it. Okay. I mean, this yeah, was the same there. kind of excuse they used for the um, Spokane River Bigfoot. She said she didn't really see it until she got home. I had that same calculator that they had in the theater. <laughs> you still have a calculator? Yeah. Yeah, a graphing oh, okay. calculator. There you go. So her statistics. Oh, wow. 
I sit behind the computer Polar Canyon, all day long, Ozone. So. Why would you do... Um... Okay, so she's... <laughs> Let me look at her paper here. Yeah, what is okay. it? She just ripped that out of the notepad. Now we're going to okay. put the official the official okay. waiting device, okay. also called a rock. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's just she's doing ozone ground. testing. Um, the first one on her list is Provo City, and the ozone um, number on that thing is... Uh, 163. Yeah. I don't know that's good. They, just, yeah, they were just like, damn, we need yeah. something with the, the the title Provo Canyon Bigfoot in it. Let's let's just do anything. It's like, well, I got to do a little bit of work today. Why don't we just, you know, do a little hoax in between the work? All right. Let's call it Provo Canyon Bigfoot. We'll get millions of views. Hopefully that hopefully that dickhead Sean will post it and it'll go viral. That's what they were thinking. And then um uh... I'm gonna ask Phil to break this down too. <laughs> <laughs> what the numbers or the guy walking? Yeah, I don't trust those numbers. Those numbers look like hoaxes to me. <laughs> Utah, did you know Utah Lake ozone is 152? Yeah. See, they're fucking hoaxers. It's 151.79. They're full of crap. Uh, I'm not. I mean, I don't know. You, do you, can you test ozone with with paper? I mean, you, that's a litmus. I think ozone. You have to like. Don't you have to like take You're the air asking in us. and run it through <laughs> spectrometer? Yes. And, you know, really? I mean, that's how you do it, right? You put it yeah, through how are they doing it? Okay, she's she's what... using paper. Well, it must be a special paper she's using. She's putting but, it on uh, the ground. Look, look what she does. Just look at the placement. A rock. She okay. puts a rock on it, puts it on the ground. How, uh, that's what. What is she coming back? Tomorrow? Hopefully it doesn't blow away. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay. Huh, interesting. Come on. It's not even like a stake in the ground, a flag or nothing. <laughs> Let's break it down. Fuck it. Let's break it down. I mean, it's the okay. table. They leave well, the table if, in the woods, coming back the next day with the table. If anybody's um, in environmental science on our chat thing here, can you let us know if that's the real way to do it or <laughs> yeah, that's please, a hoax? So, it looks bogus. I want to know if that's so, a hoax. Um, people are uh, – one person in particular has brought up Robert Lindsay a few times in the chat room. I haven't gone back and read exactly what they're saying, but at one point they were asking if Robert Lindsay still has – good contacts if Robert Lindsay is still being fed inside information because he seems yeah. still um, <laughs> I haven't heard anything well, from he him did. in a long time have I well um, he did he did bring up that whole Ketchum was raped by a oh, Bigfoot oh yeah yeah yeah, thing. yeah that started some yeah, controversy that's a, pretty, that's a really um, reliable source uh, I yeah, know the source yeah, I know, too I do too I'm not going to say who it is um, I had a, okay. I, I had to delete some comments because I revealed a little too much on that one, <laughs> I was like, maybe yeah. I shouldn't have said that that I knew that much about it, and I just deleted some shit. I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> I don't yeah, think I was supposed look, to say about that. You know, um, can't, let's just say we can wasn't... verify that that she said that happens. Yeah, and, it's not yeah, a it's secret. No secret. Everybody yeah, knows the yeah. story. If that's no secret. So, uh, but which uh, just lends credibility okay. to the cat vet in my so... mind. So. <laughs> Uh, anyways, why can't why can't why can't we have like someone like Doctor a- Doctor Anna Nakaris like being be the the uh, face of yes. of Bigfoot research? You know, why can't we have someone like her? Hey, we can be grateful that we have Doctor Jeff yes. Meldrum. Yes, as we the can be. Of yes, research. we can be. Yeah. But I'm just saying, a cute chick would be nice too. You know, like Doctor Anna Nakaris. Well, well, yeah, but I'm just happy to have one sane that's individual very elusive. <laughs> that can represent. You know. I don't care what yeah. they look like or what gender they are as long as they're saying I don't think he looks as good in a skirt is all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. <laughs> and she dyes her hair black and has a nose ring, so I'm pretty sure we're into the same kind of music too. So I'm just making my case. If she's ever listening, I know that Adam Davies is friends with her. Adam, hook a brother up. That's all I'm saying. Hook a brother up. Okay, look, look, Michael, um, here's, here's someone on the chat, um, Native Alien Girls. The paper has... To hang in sunlight in eight hours, but not on the ground. Thank you. That's what I would have thought. That is not the real way to do an ozone check. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It just it don't look very, very scientific to me. Usually, those things, you know, you have a protocol. It's very uniform. You got to do it the same way every time, <laughs> right? I mean, you could be having a reaction to the to the leaves, to the dirt, to the minerals in the ground. I mean, who the hell knows? Maybe it's over yeah. a hot spring or something. I mean, yeah. So credibility gone ground, yeah. you know, because of that. You know, it's a, it's a total hoax. Good but we're going to still have Phil break it down anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going to break it down. Make sure Phil knows how, how ozone is you know what I want to talk about is that one I could have swore was a bear, a sick bear, and he Phil said it was – Didn't it have sneakers yeah. on, though? It, it has like shoes sneakers. on. I wasn't yeah, sure if that, that was up. an artifact or okay. not. All right. What do yeah, you guys is, think? This bring is another the... one. 
on that you can find on a Team Taser network. But it's not listed here, but I'll go find it. I'll put it, it really up. It really looked like an awkward bear. I mean, I was 100% sure that was a bear. Well, it yeah. could be a bear. I mean, but you know, the picture looks kind of strange. It looks like it's set up like it's at the edge of the road. And I don't know, I mean, most bears go across the road about 45 miles an hour. Really? Hmm? That's a documented fact? Could be a bear. Couldn't be a bear? It could. It could be a bear. It could be a person in yeah. sneakers. But, but I think yeah. it's Bigfoot. Excellent. That's the kind of work we do only, here. Only one explanation. Got to be That's right, Sean. <laughs> No. If it's got sneakers on, it's Bigfoot. Cause yeah. Well, it's, sne- it's Bigfoot wearing it's, sneakers. It's a flying purple people eater. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, uh, you know, uh, there are reports. They're probably Neanderthals or something, but you get some re- – Lauren Coleman has some reports from, I, I think, mostly up in Canada of some pretty strange oh, hominids. That's my werewolf. That's that's Poor little Nate that's there. a werewolf right there, Sean. <laughs> Look at Poor Phil's there. title. He goes, Chupacabra? Werewolf? A dog man. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the famous um that's the famous uh, mangy bear, right? That we've seen lots Hairless that bear. we've seen pictures of. I don't know if it's uh I don't think it's in captivity. I think it was like some people were filming it outside of their house. A, a, a couple in Florida, it it had been scavenging wow. around their house quite frequently. And uh, they mm-hmm. thought it was some strange-looking yeah. thing, but it, it was just a mangy well, bear. Well, what would you do if you I would say it was a werewolf and go get the silver bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it almost looks like a kangaroo. Yeah. Kangaroo dog man. I don't know. Yeah. Dog man, I'm still werewolf. going with werewolf. Blue dog. You know, it's animals, the thing is you get used to looking at them with fur. Boy, when they don't have fur on them, they, look, they can look really strange. And again, for, for yeah. those who are listening to the audio podcast, if you get a chance, go to YouTube. Um, on Phil Poling's channel, uh, it's called Strange Creature Chupacabra Werewolf Dog Man. That is what we're looking at. And uh, it's filmed in like a in like a in the dark kind of, so it has a nice yeah, gray look to it. This is the first time. It. Yeah, it's spooky yeah. looking. Yeah, I mean, I use this, um, we're used to seeing pictures of mangy right. bears, but this is the first time I've ever seen. Yeah, I was excited about this oh. video. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, unfortunately, we do know what it is. I would, I, it would have been much more fun to watch if we didn't know what it was. Yeah. And we could well, have started with a lot, a lot more rumors. And... I think we could have figured it out. I don't want to figure it out. I'd like to say it's a <laughs> yeah, monster dude. living in the woods. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Hey, hey my Michael, are you getting are you getting a lot more fans now that you're calling everything a Bigfoot? You, you, your number of fans should I, I hope so, man. I'm getting tired of the hate. <laughs> yeah, because Facebook find Bigfoot. They're calling everything a Bigfoot, and they got thirty thousand fans. And they I even have that, the right now. That's a success right there. Just everything's been like, yep, rubber stamp it. I'm gonna get a stamp. You know, Bigfoot we're doing right something it. wrong because there's a hundred million people who believe in the existence of Bigfoot. I'm gonna say that. Of those hundred million, that forty million are are actively online. Thirty to forty million of them are active online users, and we collectively, maybe between the four of us who are uploading videos from Team Taser, five of us, we might collectively have five thousand subscribers. We're really behind the ball. We need to start putting some more bullshit out there. Just everything's a bigfoot. <laughs> everything's a bigfoot, and bring in more of the de- demographic. <laughs> Yeah, even if it's proven not to be a big for it, we'll just start kids, uploading uh, just Dick say... Ryder videos all day long. <laughs> yeah. No, I kid about saying it's big, but we have a high level integrity, bro. I know we yeah, would do that. I know, but it's we're not gonna label everything. The thing <laughs> is, you don't have to do it. You know, you get enough. That's why I don't really understand people that that go out. And I, I'm not gonna mention his name because it makes my skin crawl. But purposely hoax video after video, or try to do these things because you don't have to. They're are this untapped, probably thousands of eyewitnesses that no one has spoken to that have information that could help us put this thing in a box. And what needs to be done is to talk to these people, yeah, collect that information, utilize it, you know, share it with people that are smarter than we are, and figure out this mystery. Yeah, I agree. We don't I need to be hopes and stuff. I got because... a lot of flack for the way I treated Beard Card, and even though I've apologized about it, but the flack, and I understand it, is the flack that I got was as a member of the Bigfoot community, I should be... Well, that was my fault, bro. <laughs> I, dropped that, I dropped the ball that night. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> the, as a member of the Bigfoot community, I should have been 
a little more open to their uh, to their story, and I shouldn't have been so hard on them because it makes it difficult for other witnesses to come out. <clears throat> now, my defense to that is they had already come out, and I wasn't ridiculing them. I was trying to call out a hoax. Uh, I was not. You know, I was going to defend you. I, I can defend you, Ro, because you know what? If you uh, normally what you did, I would have went right after their mm -hmm. juggler. I even kind of told them that I didn't really believe them, but during the course of the conversation, they, they changed my mind. But you see so many hoaxes, and I really think, I keep saying that skepticism is probably the most valuable and you know quality that a good researcher can have is to be skeptical. Right. And you get a lot of people hoaxing stuff, so I think you should have the premise to be, it's a hoax, but I mean, you're absolutely right. We have to treat people with respect because we don't really know who's hoaxing us and, and who's yeah. not. But a lot of them are. We need more. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that when well, you. Well, if, if they're hoaxing, the truth will come out. I yeah. mean, um, right. I mean, Steve, I mean, especially with Stephen now, uh, you know, who's oh, like. Oh man, that guy is spot on. <laughs> he he really is, gets the information quick, doesn't he? Oh, he does. He'll he'll hunt you down if you're hoaxing. <laughs> <laughs> he will hunt you down. And yeah, you'll just start dude, getting death And with his beard, people. he looks extra scary. Dude, he looks frightening with that beard. Everybody's got the beard. Yeah, he looks frightening with that with that goat going on, man. I don't think we look scary though, bro. You and me don't look. Why is it the other guys look so so dangerous? Well, you look dangerous, just not I think scary. Because I have a cute hat. <laughs> it's gonna be the hat. And you've got a beanie on. You've got a snow cap on. You look like you're all cozy, ready, ready to, yeah, to snuggle up with your harmless. loved one by the fireplace. <laughs> Hey, do we know of anybody else other than uh, myself and Bill Brock and possibly Todd Standing that are going to go out in the pucker brush in the winter time and try to track one of these things down? Do I know Todd Standing's around with that ghillie suit? You I know. know. Well, you can't really see him. He's kind of I visible, know that but... Daniel Perez and and Nadia and Justin attempted to go out, um, but they didn't have a four wheel. They weren't in a four wheel drive, so they, their night was cut short. So I think mm. people are going to continue to attempt to get out. Because isn't Guy Edwards going to produce something? I mean, I, I question him. He, I don't know. He must have not missed my PM. But I'm really interested in whether these things migrate or not. Professor Coleman seems to think that they do. As, the, as does know, Bart I think, Cantino. Bart has often suggested that they move, they follow the ungulates into the... Well, maybe they do out there where you have really steep mountains. But I'm like wondering in other areas, like in Maine, you know, you can't do that. Like where you're talking... It's not a very far, right. long distance they have to go to to get lower elevation and, and to get out of the into lower snow, right? Correct. No, no snow. it's it's straight down. See, if you're up like up in most places in Canada and something, you'd have to go thousands of miles to get out of the right. deep snow. So I'm just wondering, you know, wh what is going on in the winter time with these things? Man, I think it, it yeah, I think it varies just like other primates that they adapt to their surroundings. The doors mm -hmm. open. Is it a Sasquatch? Is it the beast? Of, no, is, the dog. Oh, opened, not, the dog opened the door, okay, not Sasquatch. I thought it was the three-toed beast of Boggy Creek coming in. No, Doobie can open the door. <laughs> she doesn't learn how to close it. So, um, so yeah. So I'm excited about the winter. I know you said that you know you didn't, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of information. I know Michael Phillips comes up with photographs of what look like Bigfoot footprints. I'm just in the not a very time. equipped winter guy. I'm not a very equipped winter guy. I'm uh, no. I I don't do well in the cold. Uh, and, uh, and I, and I get winded, man. I'm an asthmatic. So just being at higher uh, elevations is a little bit of a challenge though. I usually am okay. But when I'm in the higher elevations in the cold, man, I have a really tough time. I'm not much of a winter guy. I like it right here at the beach. <laughs> well, you know, maybe wintertime is the time that you could actually get, I mean, you would certainly, one thing that would be a huge advantage if you cut a track. Mm -hmm. And I use that term cutting a track as you come across a, a track. It wouldn't be like in the summertime where like the track way that Cliff and Guy Edwards right. and those guys went and cast where you just have a few little tracks. In the wintertime, you could stay on that track. I mean the only thing that would stop right. you from following that track, as Michael Phillips points out to me, is if it comes to a 3,000-foot cliff and, and climbs straight up it. Right, you know? right. Yeah, no. I, I, I mean it might go into a terrain that you can't yeah, follow. I just, have, I just don't think that – in this area, there are very many um, winter sightings that I've that I know of in the higher elevation. Well, they did that one up there in Washington, yeah. didn't they? Up where? Yeah, I find a Bigfoot. Remember, they mm -hmm. helicoptered them in and landed them on that's top the of the one. I, yeah, that's, that's the only well-documented one. Superstar Mountain, right, 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 right. right. 
Yeah. I yeah. I just think in general there aren't as many. The the winter sightings are usually at lower elevations out here. Like in the Sierras, yeah. like they have sightings in the Sierras all summer, and then when the snow comes in, people have sightings at, at in Lake Tahoe at the lower elevations. See, his is what I find interesting is last year somebody reported to Bill Brock seeing something in Jackman in the middle of the winter. Now, it wouldn't be a bear because <laughs> the bears hibernate right. in the winter time. Right. I mean, I suppose it's possible some bear could be all whacked out on having eaten mushrooms at the wrong time of his winter hibernation and get energized and decide to go out for a hike. But for the most part, you don't find bear tracks in the winter time. So if somebody is seeing something bear like, you know, that eliminates oh, is it a bear walking upright? And that's the argument at Snell Grove Lake too, the the infamous Snell Grove Lake cabin trashing from Mon the Monster Quest episode that bears should be hibernating in December or whatever it was, November or December. Because the area is covered with four or five feet of snow. So, you know. Well, November's a little early around here for bears to hibernate. But, yeah, once yeah. they go into hibernation there, you know, it's got to be something else. It, it's kind of like that that moose skull. Like, I'm not really – I mean, maybe the hell, maybe a Sasquatch did get its hand. How the hell do I right. freaking know? Uh, <laughs> I did see something weird through the binoculars. Which I swear to I, – I told Bill, I said, I, I'm imagining shit. <laughs> because, you know, we're up there for like three hours doing the he, – he's got the bionic gear and we're doing the predator calls and I'm scanning constantly. So your mind plays yeah. tricks on you and, and you see crap. But <clears throat> uh, a bear didn't lug that skull around in yeah. the wintertime. <clears throat> and moose heads are – you saw the size of that skull. They're heavy. Oh, yeah. Now, maybe that a coyote looks, could drag it a little ways, but it wouldn't drag it very far. Where the hell were, were the rest yeah, of the that, bones? That thing looks huge. That thing looks huge. No, it was – I thought first on the video I said it was a young one, but when I compared it to the other moose skulls I have in my collection, I, I was in error. It's actually quite a large <laughs> moose skull. <laughs> Interesting. How, how old was that, is that skull that you found? Just How old is it? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing it's probably been on the ground just from looking at the moss and lichen growth on it, probably for at least two summers. So it was probably two years ago that it's that it's been there. But that's yeah. just a I don't know. Um, you, you you hear these things about you know you can't find Bigfoot bones because you know it gets eaten by animals. So what's what's different over there? I mean. Why? Well, the thing is, a lot of moose, Sean. I mean, we've got some seventy-six thousand moose in the state of Maine. I mean, they're all, literally you walk into the woods and it's like a cow pasture. There are I see. the sign everywhere. There's moose yeah, everywhere right. in Maine. Yeah. Especially when you get up in the northern areas where where we do most yeah. of our. I see. Yeah. When yeah. So when you have something as rare as Bigfoot, you're not gonna find bones that easily. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I've run across a, quite a few, a lot of dead animals in the woods, and usually. The animal itself, it depends on what the substrate is, but usually the bugs will, will completely demolish, say, a moose in the space of a month or two if it's in the summertime. So all you got left is the bones, and then the scavenger, you know, coyotes and foxes and stuff and, and porcupines will love to gnaw on that calcium. They'll tend to scatter that even further. So just in one year, but, like, let's say that skull, like, I dug around. Normally you'd find that stuff in the substrate, and there was no other, there wasn't any other bones there. So you can't wow. find it, but usually after about two years, you gave that skull another another year or so, and you know you probably would have been covered with moss. You wouldn't have found it. Hmm. So, yeah, and these things are all over the place, like you say. I mean, but I mean, if a Sasquatch died, like uh, the when Justin, you know, stat or that that <laughs> that if he actually killed the female, unless something dragged that off, you would expect to be able to find that body, mm -hmm. you know, or pieces no. of it for no. a couple of years. Well, they 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 bury the dead, so. You're not going to yeah, find no yeah. pin. Maybe they do. How I mean, do I know this? I don't know. I, I, just learned, I just learned something. Provo's proof of that. Provo, you have to go back and, and dig. Someone needs to go back and dig. Oh, I think it would be a fantastic idea to go back to uh, – you know what I wanted to know? What were those – what type of trees were those? I mean, was that thing eating nuts? Was it digging tubers? Was it burying a dead baby? I mean, uh, what the hell was it doing? <laughs> you know what's interesting? There's people um, going on my YouTube account still saying it's a turkey. I don't it's know. Not if you're joking or what, dude? Come on, guys. I'm not a I'm not a it's biologist, not and I knew turkey. that instantly in the first seven seconds that it wasn't a turkey. Uh, I'd bet anything that is not a turkey. That's a it's fucking ginormous. No way turkey. in hell, man. Maybe a fucking. Yeah. It not, doesn't behave like a turkey. 
games. Um, did they say they were going to go back? I mean, I, I thought they were going to go back, like, soon. They tried to go back, Sean, and apparently it's it snowed there, and, and I guess the road's closed, so mm-hmm. it looks like they're going to have to wait till spring thaw, but I, once again, yeah. I can't speak for them. I mean, I've spoken yeah. to them quite a bit, but I my understanding is uh, they're... Know. What they're going to try to do is go up there and reenact it with a person of known size from the exact same spot so that by springtime we'll be able to compare. I, I see a correlation here. Did you notice that uh, Justin shot the Bigfoot in October, right? I see a direct and correlation. It's, yeah. it's snowed, it, the road snowed in like yeah. two weeks ago. Now you got the same thing like a week after the sighting, there's snow. So I you know think what I didn't ask time, was what direction that thing was going in. Maybe it was migrating south. Yeah. Or, so the best know. time to see Sasquatch is in Oct- end of October. I'll, I'll well, say it right now. Well, think about this, Sean. It, it's easier, uh, I don't know, out that area, but deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves in the wintertime, I mean, during the summertime, if something was in that, you wouldn't be able to see it. Once the leaves fall, you have much greater visibility. So you, that might be one reason that there's a higher rate of sightings. And, and the migratory hmm. patterns, possibly. On top of that, well, that could be another thing, and I mean that, that would be something that guy would have to use the statistical analyses to determine whether a higher incident of sightings is due to because it's July and people are out there camping, or is it due because the animals are migrating? Right. I mean, it's tough to determine what you can't link cause and effect there without really knowing what's going on. It's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. Hmm. I think we've uh, covered a lot of ground today, um, Sean. What do we have on tap for tonight? Wanna let's let's cover well, let's cover the stuff that's going on right now. Well, tonight um, we're gonna. What time does the show come on? The Finding Bigfoot. I gotta look at my TV. This everyone's <laughs> everyone has a different time. Okay, I'm seeing ten o'clock, but I don't think it really comes on at ten. No, does we it? last I mean, last, um, last last weekend it was seven. Week. The season premiere was at yeah. seven Pacific. Yeah, so I don't want to tell people the time and then they're gonna miss it. So check your local listing, but we're gonna find out what time it comes on here, and. Um, all four of us, we're going to watch it together, and we're going to um, make fun of Matt Money, make his hair again. Nice. And uh, this, <laughs> Good and this episode, they are going to be covering, covering the Vermont trail cam photo. Now, we have our own breakdown uh, from Phil Pauling that was just released today, and I think he probably agrees with the rest of us. I haven't watched it yet, but I think he's going along with the, the owl theory that's been passed around. That it's Bigfoot. And, or that it's Bigfoot, one or the other. It's got, I mean, it's... You can see how that goes. I'm leaning um, 51%, 51? Bigfoot. Yeah, 51% Bigfoot. Excellent. Yeah, 51% Bigfoot. Good for you, yeah. Sean. Glad to have you on my yeah, side. Me too. <laughs> oh, and uh, Rick Dyer's in the in the chat room, if that's really him. Oh, yeah. I, I know. That's, I'm sure it's not Dan Morgan. Or, oh, I'm sorry, Dan yeah, Morgan. Yeah, Dan Morgan. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to keep up. There's also some woman Morgan. I think he's on an additional. Who knows? He says he already accomplished it, so maybe he's got multiple right. sock accounts. And, yes, it is uh, 7 p.m., <laughs> Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. So we will be – go to Sean's site for the link. We're going to live blog once again for this episode of Finding Bigfoot, episode number two. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. fun. I think we're going to have one of Sean's uh, friends, a very funny guy, join us, uh, non-Bigfoot – inside Bigfooter's perspective, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> we also have our new uh, content site on at Bigfoot Evidence Blog. You can click on the Team Taser tab to find all of our latest videos. We've got a lot of shit coming out this shit la- this week, last week, this coming up week. Oh, I got Dax's got, interview. I got a giant snake interview on the way. Yeah. I don't know what you got planned, bro, but I got tons of stuff. I, uh, I got some stuff coming. planned. Yeah, I got uh, Mike Rugg actually coming up in the next week. Yeah, look, oh, awesome. Yeah, so all these guys are producing all this stuff. All you guys got to go is go to that Team Taser tag, tab, and you guys can all find it there. You guys don't... Or you guys can subscribe to them, yes. and you see it on and YouTube. And another thing, yeah. it is um, it, we are doing all these shows for free. So if anybody wants to contribute, what you can do is when you're watching these videos, is visit the sponsors. You see the the ads on the side, the pop up ads at the beginning. Visit these sponsors. That really helps us out. Uh, in addition to that, we have a couple of other sponsors: the Bigfoot Evidence Store. We have a couple of cool designs. The one that's selling hot right now, if you go to the Bigfoot Evidence Store, is the Bigfoot Crossing uh, T-shirt in black. <laughs> Sasquatch Crossing T-shirt. That one's selling like hotcakes right now, so get yours for Christmas. Well, who, who doesn't yeah, need yeah, one of those? It's, you know? it's quiet. It's, uh, 
Because we don't want Sasquatch to get run over. Well, I do. Just don't put your brakes on if you're right? going across you. Also, if you can bring yourself to hit the accelerator, do that and just say it was accidental. Will your insurance cover that, though, if you hit a Sasquatch? And uh, yeah. I don't know if there's, there is such a thing as Sasquatch insurance, but I imagine if you live on the East Coast, you're probably covered for hitting deer. You know? Who knows? Uh, Michael, would you care to show everybody what's hanging around your neck and tell us a little bit about that? Oh, Yes. Yes, a very nice handmade. They're, every one of them is an individual, and they're infused with magic from Tammy Murray. Sassy glassy. Sassy glassy. All yeah. right. Sassy I try to sport glassy. mine as much as possible. Thank you, everybody. Especially when I'm out Bigfoot hunting, you know, and I ask people if there's Bigfoot, and they're like, are you serious? I go, yeah, see, look, man, look, I'm serious. I got glass. <laughs> we will be recording a year uh, in review show with Guy Edwards. We're going to be doing a, a hopefully a two-hour show. With Guy, sometime over the next couple of weeks, this is the last live broadcast of the year. We want to thank everybody who has helped make this podcast successful. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts that you guys take the time yeah, out you of your day to listen to us babble for two hours every other Sunday. Time you'll never yeah. get back. I know it's painful at times. It's painful at times, but we do our, our best. Now, go, if you haven't already, If you if you're one of the – those who watches from Ustream uh, on the live page, go to iTunes, click the subscribe button, and uh, rate it five stars or whatever it lets you rate it. <clears throat> Leave a review. All those things helps, uh, helps us out quite a bit. I'm having trouble talking. My <laughs> mouth is really dried out, and I think I'm starting to get sick. Damn it. Fucking that's un – And click those YouTube uh, ads too. Click them a whole bunch of times. I promise to stop having unprotected sex with Bigfoot hookers. Ugh. Anyways. Is that a problem for you, Rob? It has been. I have something about those hairy boobies. Hey, what is the deal with the funding of the three hundred thousand dollar derivative? I don't know, but I didn't get any of that. Oh, I want to no. widen that thing. Are they going to take I, up people? I, I people? think. I think the networks are going to pay for it. Um, you know, that would be a jump start program because one of the if the, the you know if somebody donated like ten grand, you give them a ride yeah. in it. You would Ooh. have to. They could operate the thermal. Ah. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, I am. I, I again, idea. everybody, this is the last live broadcast for 2012. Uh, these weekends coming up are just too packed with stuff for us. And um, we are going to do a, a two hour special with Guy Edwards, a year in review that we will release hopefully in the next two weeks here. Um, two at the latest. And that should hopefully take you take us into 2013. 2013, mm -hmm. Team Taser has a lot of stuff going on. We have the year of the Sasquatch. We might we might have as many as three podcasts. Okay, we have Bigfoot after we're gonna have uh, Team Taser after hours extinct and possibly one more podcast. I'm working on trying to make that happen. That happens by you guys clicking on the ads. That really helps helps us out quite a bit. So for for Damien, well, we already got three rows. Yeah, we, we got this. We got the the thing the for finding Bigfoot right. when we watch it, and then we've got the secret. secret. Yeah, so there you have it. Whoever. So join us tonight for the live blog, and thank you again. On behalf of Damien Bravo, Phil Pauling, Bill Brock, who could not be here. Um, am I missing somebody of the – no? Just and, us. And, and us, us three guys, <laughs> us three guys. Damien, what happened to you, brother? You did. You missed the last two podcasts. We and our all our administra administrated people and our infrastructure yes. and our many supporters and our fans yes. and our minions and minions yes. all all the people that are nice to us everybody basically except the yeah. haters. Thank you for an awesome 2012. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you so much, we, everybody. Uh, we really, awesome. really appreciate it. And next year will be better. We promise. We're, we're gonna get our shit together. Oh, I apologize that this is the box. last one, but I have two birthday weekends coming up, well, holidays, Thanksgiving party out of town. So I'm just not going to be here. I can't. I can't do it. I would love to. Well, you know, um, uh, I mean, this extreme podcast might be over this year, but we still got a bunch of other yep. stuff to look forward to. Yep. I mean, a lot, a lot of, of stuff. stuff. A lot of stuff. And uh, movies, movies, new movies coming into production. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready? Let's play some music and rock this yep. bitch out for Good. the last time in 2012. Let's let's go back. Let's get until the end of the let's world. Go old school. Let me bring that this old dirty guitar. Keep sending in those beard yeah. photos. The, the end of the year beard contest. Because you know there's a glass thing that you want to be surprised. And there's a mug with my crazy face on it. Drawn by the can we can we get a howl? Oh. Oh.